Have you been wondering if hyperbaric might help you lose weight? We're gonna talk about that in this next video. Let's go a little bit deeper into why do we eat and why do we breathe? So the main reason that you eat is to extract certain chemical compounds that you're gonna feed into your mitochondria to produce energy. The reason you breathe is ultimately so that you can absorb oxygen, deliver it to that same mitochondria, and inside your mitochondria, you're gonna oxidize, you're gonna use oxygen, you're gonna oxidize those chemicals that you extracted from your food. So your food is literally your fuel, and then the oxygen oxidizes your fuel, and in those chemical processes that we call metabolism, energy is made. And then your body uses that cellular energy to do all the billions and trillions of things that your cells need to do on a regular basis. So does the food you eat impact that process? Of course it does. Sugar or carbohydrates have a certain effect on your ability to make energy, and fats are gonna have a completely different effect on how your body makes energy. So to understand this better, let's compare your metabolism to a fire, like a fire, backyard fire in a fire pit. In a backyard fire, you're throwing some logs, some twigs, you might even use a little bit of kindling or some lighter fluid to get it moving. And now you have this fire burning. That fire is your metabolism. And as you put different ingredients on that fire, it burns. Just like as you put different ingredients in your mouth, your body tries to burn those and create energy and heat. The fire creates energy and heat. Of all the things that we eat, fat, protein, and carbohydrates, fat and carbohydrates are primarily used for energy production and protein is primarily used for healing and regeneration. So of the two main ingredients for energy production, glucose and fat, or carbohydrates and fats, carbohydrates are like throwing a little gasoline on the fire. It'll burn really, really hot, really, really quick, and then it kind of goes out. So if we wanted that fire to keep going, we have to keep pouring little bits of gasoline on top of that fire to keep it stimulated. If we got that fire hot enough, we could throw a big log on that fire and it'll just keep burning and burning and burning. And it'll keep that fire, that one log will keep that fire burning for a really long time. Another difference between, let's say the gasoline and the wood, that gasoline would create a lot of smoke. It's an inefficient burn versus that wood, once it catches on fire, it puts out a lot less smoke. It's a much cleaner burn than the gasoline would be. Inside your body, carbohydrates are like the gasoline. It's a short burn, it's a dirty burn, and it's something that needs to be replaced constantly. Fat is like that log. It's a clean burn, it burns a really long time, and it can sustain us more fully for a much longer period of time. The amount of oxygen required to oxidize your carbohydrates or to oxidize your fat is also very different. In other words, I could measure the amount of oxygen you breathe in, and the amount of carbon dioxide you exhale, and the ratio between those two, I could tell if you eat primarily carbohydrates or primarily fat. It's called respiratory quotient, your RQ. And the more efficient you are, the more efficient you're using the oxygen and the less waste products, the less carbon dioxide that you have, the more likely you are burning fat. The less efficient you are, the more uh, oxygen you require, and the more carbon dioxide waste products that you exhale means you're less efficient, is likely that you're eating much more of a carbohydrate-based diet. So we can tell just on how you utilize those gases what your diet actually looks like. What is hyperbaric doing? Hyperbaric is delivering an unusually high amount of oxygen into that system. What does that mean? It means you're gonna be able to oxidize your fuel much more efficiently than you would without that extra oxygen. And if we measured RQ in a few anecdotal studies that have been done, measuring RQ pre and post hyperbaric, they have shown an increase in fat burning as a result of hyperbaric. In other words, as you get more oxygen, your capacity to burn fat instead of burning sugar is much higher. So it creates a hotter fire that makes you more capable of burning fat. This comes in handy, especially when we're doing a lot of ketosis or fasting, or we're detoxing patients and we're putting them through different diet routines that are much more fat heavy in order to improve the efficiency of that person's ability to burn that fat. As a result of this process, do you get increased percentages of fat burning? Absolutely. Is it enough to make up for a terrible diet? Absolutely not. There's no amount of hyperbaric that you could do to drive your metabolism fast enough to make up for an unhealthy diet. So number one, no matter what issue you're trying to either resolve or what health goal you might have, it has to include eating a healthy diet. Typically speaking, that's also gonna include reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you're taking in and probably increasing the amount of fat that you're getting. Most people are not getting enough fat and are absolutely getting too many carbohydrates. Too much gasoline, 
not enough logs. And so you get hungry all the time. You get moody all the time. Your energy and your mood are directly attached to the amount of sugar in your system. We need to separate our mood and our energy levels from the food that we're eating. And having a higher fat burning metabolism, having a higher fat load in our diet is going to absolutely help create that separation. And hyperbaric could help oxidize those fats more efficiently. Absolutely true. But it's never going to oxidize them fast enough to really create weight loss, especially if your diet is the opposite of what I'm describing. I would not recommend using hyperbaric specifically for weight loss. I would absolutely recommend, of course, having a healthy diet and using hyperbaric as an adjunctive therapy to push fat burning because that's going to help in your metabolism, which is going to help hormone regulation. It's going to help your detoxification process. It's going to help you heal and regenerate all the things that your body needs to do. You'll get more energy by becoming more efficient. So it will help with all of those, but it's certainly not going to be a great weight loss tool, especially not on its own. So I hope that helps answer the question of whether or not you could use hyperbaric for weight loss. If you have somebody else in your life that's thinking along the same lines and wondering that same thing, please share this video with them. If you found this interesting or helpful for you, please like it or subscribe. That tells Google that we're doing a great job and then that lets us get our messages to other people looking for them. So hit those buttons, send this video off. I appreciate your attention and we'll catch you next time.